He mean, actually did get money from China. That man is not a billionaire, first of all. He's a, but I just think like there's definitely people behind him and they use him as well because he's African, right? He's, you know, quote unquote, the American dream. You can go over there and become anybody, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we all get sentimental when anything is black owned. Yes. Right? So if he, like how you're saying there's Bitcoin and now there's a coin, there are going to be people that would rather go with a coin simply. Yeah. They'll be like, oh, it's black owned. I'm supporting my own. But is it really black owned? <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to Kenganda. My name is Johnny Tamaya and this is the Repat Podcast. I'll let my co-host. Hi, my name is are. Tina. Hi, Tina. Tina, tell the people, Tina. Hi, what? my name is Tina. I do <laughs> social media consulting. Actually, no, legit, I do. So hire me. Mm -hmm. I have my rate card, which I can send to you. Okay. You find me on Instagram, Tinagram. Okay. <laughs> my biggest supporter here to my right. Yeah. O'Shea Duke Jackson. <laughs> From the African American community living in Uganda, Sacramento, let's go. Okay. Um, so there's this clip about Acorn. It's from Go Black to Africa. Um, watch this with us and react to it with us. Okay. So is Acorn out right now? It's, yeah, it's active in, in Africa as we speak. Okay. So it's, is it being used in it's Africa? It's being used currently right now in Africa. Yeah. Okay. In what countries? In Kenya. Huh. And right now we got a test going on in Uganda. Hmm. So it's only in East Africa at the moment. Okay. Did the whole crypto crash kind of affect it? No, nah, not at all. Really? Honestly, not at all. Because our currency don't really coincide with the, you know, Western currencies like that. And then Acoin is built specifically on mobile minutes. So we transfer your mobile minutes into currency that can be spent on the market. So let me explain that. Yeah, I, I, I know get you're that. confused. I don't get it. Yeah, so I don't basically, get it. the currencies in certain parts of Africa are so untrusted that people are utilizing their mobile minutes to purchase at the local market. So instead of giving them the real, like the currency, the local currency, mm -hmm. they would just transfer minutes. Oh, okay. I don't That's got what gave me the okay. idea. I don't have $10, but I'll give you uh, 10 minutes on your I, phone boom. to use and exactly. we'll just call it even. So I was like, wait a minute. They're not using money? They're using mobile minutes? Huh. And that's what gave me the idea. Akon is Akon. What's up, family? This is your <laughs> man, not your boy. Bringing you another gold nugget that you can either pick up or you can just kick it aside. Akon, with all that he has done, supposedly, when it came to lighting up Africa and having a crypto uh, city that's supposed to be in Senegal, and he has this A coin, uh, you know, like a Bitcoin, that him and his team went out to do a project to be able to help and assist small entrepreneur businesses in Africa. And we're requesting people to come on board this journey in doing this project to help Africa. Now myself and many people joined on board because why not help people who really don't have much, but yet you want to see them flourish just like you might see yourself or others. In this whole confusion I don't want to say scam but I'm going to say that they have not fulfilled their promise and what they would provide to the donors the investors or the contributors of this whole thing now you know so guys you've watched the clip with us um, from go black to Africa once again a con is mm -hmm. a con mm -hmm. yeah what do you think about that so, Akon, for the last 10 years, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, he was an artist, came up in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Then, uh, I mean, excuse my language, Akon is a no talent. I, mean, I think he's a bum, but um, people like him, you know, that kind of auto-tune stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. But in, be it as it may, Akon became a very big artist during his time, and then he used that popularity to really uh, make the call to invest into Africa. Mm -hmm. And um, now at the, at the same time, Akon took a lot of shots at the African-American community. A lot. Forget about slavery. 
he said a lot of hateful things towards towards people. But I, it was funny man, because when he we needed people to invest, the people who were trying to invest came from the diaspora, and some of those people were, were coming from our communities. Now, Akon, quote unquote, I don't want to be quoted on this, but he was here in Uganda trying to also get land for a project. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's asking Mu seventy for that. I don't know how many acres he needed. He but, wanted to do a little city here, right? Yeah, yeah, Akon City. Mm. And that didn't work out. And then another Akon City, didn't, that didn't work out. And then I believe Go Black to Africa. Did he invest how much money? You didn't watch that part? I believe he spent $1,000. Mm-hmm. He's trying to get the money back from the guy, trying to follow up what's happening. Nobody's replying. All of this stuff. And then Akon is also... Divisive in the diaspora. He just had a new video that came says Nigerians are the smartest people in the world. So now you have a guy that's like either bipolar or or or, or really crazy. Mm-hmm. Firstly, you you try to say three points. You're trying to unite us as the black world to come and do something, which is what scammers typically do in the in in, in any kind of it's always cultural. Shout out to Pocket Watch and JT. Scamming is cultural. That's why whites is hard time to really scam people that scam. They do they do so in a in a community they understand. Mm-hmm. So what Akon's thing is, okay, I understand the African American community. I understand the diaspora. We need to invest back home and build up home. So that's the call. I'm popular. I need to build back home. Then after getting some support, he's now. Dividing the diaspora, taking shots at the African American community, then saying Nigerians are smarter, the smart people in the diaspora, which I understand that Nigerians are the majority of people, but it's gonna make somebody else feel bad, Ugandans, Ghanaians, or whatever. Then thirdly, you can't deliver on what you're talking about. And that is what scammers typically do. They they align with you culturally, then they use the money to never fulfill what they are talking about. Mm -hmm. So then what happens after that? Let me just say, these niggas ain't shit. That's how people feel, right? Like, this is why I don't trust people. This is why I don't trust blacks. This is why I don't want to do this and that. It gives us that stigma as to why we don't want to work together. Mm -hmm. And then, unfortunately, the people who get left out are the good people who actually want to see Africa develop the people who actually do have the skills. And it's just like what I've seen the Pan-African world do is the same thing that we do in maybe black Britain or in America. We we're relying on celebrities to come up with solutions Mm -hmm. when celebrities are too stupid to come up with solutions. And we're led by our emotions and our investing. And then the people who actually have the skills, the fund managers, people like that, these are the people who can't get anything done because they don't have the charisma. You see, and then, and we get we 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 get we get beat again. Or, you know, take an L as a community because we have a guy that you know we didn't ask the questions like, okay, buying something with mobile minutes, like what? Where in the fuck does that make sense? Did like, he mean mobile money? No, no mo- mobile, minutes. mobile minutes. Like, oh. imagine you're going to care for right. Mm-hmm. And then you say, "I have five minutes." Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to buy this bread. Um, I want to. I want to buy this groceries today with uh some airtime player. Like, what are they gonna say? Oh, okay, how many minutes you left? Four hundred minutes. Y'all want to buy this bread with some text messages, please? I got a text bundle. <laughs> you know, let me buy some bread. Like, imagine how stupid you would sound mm-hmm. to do that. And we don't ever ask no questions in the black community either. Yeah. We just be like, oh my God, that's Dr. Umar. Oh my God, that's uh, brother whoever, whoever it is. Oh man, the mm-hmm. brother preaching. Give him the money. This guy has, this, this guy might be smart, but he's not a financial guy. Yeah. yeah. He had no clue what he was talking about in the clip. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's and it's very clear that on Vlad, what in the hell was that? Any, 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 if, if okay, if it wasn't Akon, if it was a normal person that came and told you that, what in the hell would you think? Scammer. Mm. But we make excuses for people we like, though. Yeah, we all do. So I'll I'll, I'll turn it over. Tina, what do you think? Oh, I think for me, yeah, 
Mm-hmm. My first issue with Akon was no, I think okay. So like his PR team is really good, right? <laughs> because like the press that they have around him sounds really positive. It mm-hmm. sounds like he's doing a lot. But the thing that annoys me is if you're gonna scam anybody, why don't you scam the white people in that <gasps> country? Why would you come <laughs> back you know. home to scam your own people? No, it's it's actually disgusting because. It started with the whole um, he's giving electricity to da da, and the way it was packaged in the press, it seemed like he was giving electricity. Mm. Yet he was not. He created a system where people could get electricity, but they still had to pay. So if these oh. people still can't afford the electricity. What have you done? But uh, you know, create something that they. Oh, sorry, words mm-hmm. have gone. What? Have, <laughs> sorry. Okay. No, I'm yeah. saying like if these people still can't afford it, then you've just enticed them with something they still can't access. Yeah. So you you were better off leaving them without the electricity to begin with, mm. type of thing. So that's my issue. I think like everything that he does, he's packaged as this sort of, um, you know, people that go abroad and then they work hard, then they come back home and they pour back into their communities. Right. But he doesn't do that. Mm. He goes away he makes his money then he comes home and takes advantage of his communities and Mm -hmm. i can't respect that as an african man i genuinely can't because it's all fake it's all a lie and the a coin thing are we really doing testing because i've never heard of that some someone someone is testing something Mm -mm. (laughs) maybe 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 that maybe that crack (laughs) somebody sniffing that cocaine because it makes no sense off the a coin (laughs) off the a coin (laughs) Yeah, um, just I think for most of viewers, I want to actually explain mobile money to some people so that we yeah. see how it can relate to Acorn mm. minutes. So how mobile money works is you have you have a certain amount of money, you take it to an agent, mm-hmm. they deposit it on your mobile money number. Yes. So mm-hmm. you can send that that money to someone else, like from one telephone, from one mobile number yeah. to the next mobile number. But it's all like cash, even though it's mobile. Mm-hmm. And the other person can withdraw that cash. But remember, it started from you having physical cash that you deposited on your mobile number or money from your bank that's actually there that you deposited on your mobile number. Mm-hmm. Now now that we've understood that, when Akon explains his minutes, do they make sense? Because like, where is the money coming from? And who is accepting minutes in this day and age? And it's surprising that it's in East Africa. Like, wh- Where? In Uganda and Kenya only. Apparently, Kenyans are using it already. We have a Kenyan here. I should tell us mm. if they're using Acorn minutes, because no. <laughs> you know, um, Kenya was the first country to do mobile money. Yeah. So maybe they're trying out Acorn minutes and they're going to spread it to the rest of the world, mm-hmm. which I highly doubt. And then with Uganda, when Acorn came to Uganda, we actually knew the person who brought him, but we can't say his name. Mm. You know the person who brought him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when Acorn came to Uganda. Uh, he had this whole meeting with the president and he was, it's like he was selling a dream, honestly, the Akon City. When I heard about what he was trying to do, it felt like he was trying to isolate himself from the from the rest of the world. But it's like, why would you come to a country that's already beautiful and has all these amazing things and then you want to take a portion of it and isolate it from the world? It, it just sounded like a cult. It just sounded so shady. It's like, what are you trying to do in this small little thing that you're trying to make out. And there are people who eat his story up and they were agreeing with him and they were saying yes to everything that he's saying and giving him the land that he needs to create what Can he creates. Can you imagine giving him land? They, they will. They may it and maybe they did. Mm. We'll never know until he comes out and tells us. But yeah, I feel like, like Tina said, I think it's it's unfortunate that he does this to his own people. I'm sorry to go black for having experienced that. Imagine... Maybe he believed in his story and then mm. decided to support the the story and whatnot. <clears throat> and then he got scammed out of that. And that's really unfortunate because so many times someone tells you that story is like, oh, I'm trying to do this. I want to change the world. And you're like, hey, you know what? Let me support your dream to change the world. Mm-hmm. And then you only find out that that dream to change the world is actually to change your pocket change. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you see the word play? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Pocket. Oh, the pocket change. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. 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 But it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Yeah. And um I think Akon is like it relates to what Oshay always talks about the middleman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. there's a kind of, there's a similarity there. Well, middlemen are and they can be and usually are no talent scammers. Mm-hmm. And scammers in, in the African context that I have dealt with, number one, a scammer can't get to you unless he knows what your motivation is. Mm. Okay. So a scammer if he is, let's say, if he lived in America, 
the first thing that person's going to do, a.k.a. Khan, a.k.a. some of the other folks we know, they're going to align to you based on the fact that, you know what, man? <sighs> Uganda is not as progressive. But you know what? I know some people who are not like this. Mm-hmm. Right? So they're going to align with you like, you know, I'm going to agree. Things are not as fast or progressive as you would like them to be. And they can even compliment you. But somebody like you, what you guys do, it's amazing. And you know what? I know the right people who would appreciate what it is that you do. Boom, right there. You're like, and for you, you're like, thank God. We finally got somebody. The guy speaks your language. And when I'm not talking about your language, I don't mean English. He's talking your progressive thoughts because this is what people in the black diaspora want. They either want to come to Africa or they want to return to Africa and make some sort of goal happen that they've been dreaming about all the time. So the scammer is going to align with that because he's going to try to be the, I align with you, but see, there are people I know that are progressive and they'll start being name dropping of these particular people they know in whatever ministry or something like that. But if they can't get you like that, then they're going to know if your motivation is money. So typically if the money thing doesn't work, they will go to something that you're aligned to. If you want to help Africa, if you're altruistic, then they'll start dealing with you on those terms specifically. But mostly most scammers deal with return on investment. That's where we have a coin, right? So a coin, whether you want to be in the, in in the African American or come back to Africa or not, a coin it's very similar to what we hear as Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. So people have heard of Bitcoin like, oh, I can get in low with this and it can make a lot of money. I can become a millionaire, billionaire. This guy is Akon. Mm-hmm. So even if I don't want to come back to Africa, I can still use this Acoin in this city that will never exist. <laughs> that you, you understand what I'm saying? So those things. So scammers understand, number one, your culture, like Akon. He knows African-Americans have been discriminated in America. That's a selling point. He's going to always come back to that. In Africa, you can be free. You know, Africa, you can do this. And most scammers are going to hit you with those points, those emotional points that Africa has this return on investment, which it it can be true. That's definitely true. They're never going to talk about the bullshit in the game, but they're going to hit you in your... um, particular touching points, if you will, that's going to make you go to action, make a call to action. And all Akon has been doing is making those calls to action. If it's the blacks, stop worrying about slavery. Or, you know, if it's the blacks, bring your stuff here. You can build here. Or you can invest. Or, you know, look what the Chinese are doing after you can do it too. All those are calls to action. Okay? The issue with the calls to action is that they're, they're hitting you with those things so that you won't ask any real questions as to what viability the plan is. Now, if you go to somebody like Museveni as Akon, Museveni is a genius. So he's not silly. You're not going to go and tell him something he's not heard before. It will work with a normal person, but going in front of him, he probably won't, he'll meet with you. He probably won't say it to you directly, mm-hmm. but he's going to know it doesn't make sense because guys try to hit him with everything like that every day the last 30, 40 years. So he's not dumb. Now, some of us in the diaspora, we're the ones that's dumb because most of us don't know about investing. Most of us don't know about that. And the people he's targeting usually are people who are poor, people who want to make an emotional decision. Now, the the, the, the issue that that has is it leaves a bad taste in a person's mouth in the diaspora, a very bitter taste. Because think about if you've given this guy three or $4,000 of your money that you worked hard in, and you didn't deliver because everybody's looking for that black utopia, our version of Wakanda, our version of something that we built from the ground up because everybody wants to be a generation of blacks. I'm going to say this before I turn it back over. But in our generation, we don't want to be known as a generation of blacks in our lifetime that didn't do anything. So in the black world, here's the opportunity for you to be on that frontier that you guys helped build this city to be remembered in history. You know what I mean? As somebody that took part in this great voyage that your kids and grandkids will talk about for many years to come. So people also want to have that experience. 
And the reality is, is that as a black diaspora, we have to ask tangible questions. How much do these, these things cost? You know, mm-hmm. we need to take our emotions out of it. Like, yeah, we want to come mm-hmm. to Africa, but what, what are these things? What is he doing? I can guarantee you that is not, it doesn't exist. So then we end up always getting scammed because, yeah. So people don't ask the right questions. And again, the reason why we have so much pro-black, B1, pan-African talk from the scammers, and here are these particular things, invest in this. Like Vlad, Vlad was asking him questions. He wasn't really saying that was stupid. He's asking him questions. Why? Vlad was not invested into what he was doing. Like emotionally, he wasn't invested like we were. If 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 we would ask the question, we'd be like, oh yeah, brother, the brother's doing this. It might make sense. I might not understand it, but I might, but, but, but Vlad's like, no, no, no. How does that make sense? Mm. And you could talk as he's asking more questions, it didn't make sense. Mm. So, and as the black diaspora, we just have to understand that this return to Africa is going to be many years. It's going to be continuous. It's not going to happen in one city. What's this lady, um, Arakana, the lady who's to be uh, the head of the African Union to the diaspora? She wanted the same thing to happen, and she had tried to ask um, Malawi, Zimbabwe, and uh, Zambia for uh, some land to give to make this super city. It never happened. It's not going to happen in that way. We need to stop thinking about these things where we're going to develop a piece of land. You're going to have to have people coming in, being successful, slowly but surely, doing the work. There's no community like that that's ever been settled, that's ever worked. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Yeah. 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 I also think as Africans, we need to hold each other accountable because why is someone just, why are we giving someone like him the platform? Do you know how hard it is to meet the president? Right, the I'm sorry. Like he he takes some meetings, and I'm like, really? Like the head of state of this country. Hmm. It is so hard to meet the president. I don't know what they had to do to convince that man. Because <laughs> seven is also a bit. It's a, it's a bit hard to convince. So I don't know what they told him for him to take this meeting and listen to everything Akon had to say. And you see, something like this, this is how white people came in and took over because we gave them the platform Mm -hmm. to come and tell us what they wanted to do and then were just so accepting and just so hospitable to everything that they have to tell us. Mm -hmm. And now we we may find ourselves in the same situation because how is someone telling about his city and his currency and everything and you're just going along with it? Like, what are you going to gain from it, honestly? Like this is how people come and colonize a whole country just like that because we want to give everyone an opportunity to do something. Way too many opportunities, and also I think like with Akon, um, the thing that used to baffle me was like that music career was not that he had it wasn't a, that nice amazing, songs. right? It was terrible. No, I mean the songs were like he's don't remember, awful. Like, Akon songs, is a his no songs tell. Raised us for a period. But I don't think he had that long or that big of a music career to like acquire the capital that he needed for all these scams that he's running, right? So and it's terrible. Like, we're talking about. I love it. So <laughs> Akon is he's one of the most least. I mean, even some of the guys that are out right now in the African market. I mean, they they embarrass this guy. This guy's awful. <laughs> Akon is. I a, love his songs. Akon is terrible. He's a no songs, talent. Yeah, the songs are he actually can't pretty sing. okay. He can't hold a no. He's awful. There's nothing good about Akon. He is. No, he's a I, think, no I think as an artist, he, okay, yeah, for his time, and because it was like Akon T Pen for that era, he did what he did. But my whole thing is um, so everything that he's doing now, I think a lot of the time people want to do certain things and they'll use like celebrities to sort of push them. Because, mm-hmm. like O'Shea said, we find them like more relatable. We feel like we know them, so mm-hmm. we trust them more. And I think that's the thing that's happening because he doesn't, he didn't, maybe he does now, but he didn't have the money to do the things that he was trying to do in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there were definitely investors or a group of investors and he's sort of the front man. Mm -hmm. He did get one billion from China, apparently. For? For his... For his scams or something. I don't know. For something. Mm, 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 He actually did get money from China. That man is not a billionaire. (laughs) That's the fool. 
He's a, but I just think like there's definitely people behind him and they use him as well because he's African, right? He's, you know, quote unquote, the American dream. You can go over there and become anybody, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we all get sentimental when anything is black owned. Yes. Right. So if he, like how you're saying there's Bitcoin and now there's a coin, there are going to be people that would rather go with a coin simply yeah. be like, oh, it's black owned. I'm supporting my own. But is it really black owned? That's my thing. I don't think it is. I think everything's very shady, mm -hmm. very weird, but yeah, mm. very weird. Hide your coin, protect your pocket. <laughs> Let me just say one last thing. Yeah. This whole repatriation journey, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, we are going to have people who are going to be in the business of being the next um, business coaches, Mm -hmm. I mean, these are going to be guys who are completely broke, no f talents, and they're going to be in this repatriation, come back to Africa, be one pro-black movement, convicted felons, and these people are going to be here only to scam. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to be in these communities specifically to understand the needs of these communities just to understand what your selling points are to scam. And unfortunately it happens in every community of any race. Whites deal with it. Indians deal with it. Jews deal with it, whatever. But we got to understand that it's coming. How do we gauge if somebody is going to be a scammer? They have to do more than just talk. Mm -hmm. Look at all the people who are, who have talked them their, their way into doing something and never delivered brother polite. You know what that is? Brother Polite is a is, is a joke. Hate to call his name, but Dr. Umar never built that school. This is the school is not steel. There? Steel. Where was he supposed to build a school? Thousands of years ago. Oh. Got a lot of money, never did it. Stone. This is not me disagreeing with Dr. Umar as an intellectual, mm -hmm. because most of the things that he teaches I agree with. But Dr. Umar spends too much time bragging and talking shit about himself, how he's the king of Pan-Africanism or the number one or top 10 orator in history, but you're the bottom 10% of building and accomplishing anything. Because the reason why he keeps saying that is because he, he, can't, he can't achieve anything with his projects. But he knows he don't have to do anything. See, that's another thing in the black world we got to understand. Black people know that all they got to do is talk mm -hmm. and they don't really have to produce shit. That's true in Africa too. We like our people that can rise up, our preachers that can rile, you know, get us all excited, and they don't have to produce anything. So now, what I would challenge you, because if I'm I'm not that bad of a speaker, if I wanted to be a scammer, I could easily do it. Because I know Negroes. All you gotta do is start lying. So the, but the thing is this, we have to have tangible questions. If we're going to trust people, what is their track record? Would you go to a doctor that didn't go to medical school? No. Would you? No, not if you knew it, right? You would, mm -hmm. wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Now, how are we sending money to people who didn't practice building communities? They've never done it. Mm -hmm. He's never been a real estate developer. It would be different if he is somebody like, let's say, for example, a billionaire like um, um, P. Diddy. He just fell out with Diageo. Sirach. If he goes and starts another liquor brand, it makes sense to do something with Diddy. Mm -hmm. But if Diddy says he's coming to Uganda and develop a, 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 a city, Diddy is a, he's, he's full of shit. He's a liar mm -hmm. because he doesn't have a history of doing that. Yeah. Diddy has a history of, of, of Harlem shaking and dancing and wearing shiny suits and shit, <laughs> but he don't have a history of building communities in Africa. I'm going to tell you like this. None of us do. We're on the road right now. We don't know. I was talking to Tina about this the other night. She'll tell you. How do we get the diaspora to when they get here, what are they going to do? We do not know yet. Mm -hmm. So we can't sell you on a community that we don't know. That's why we don't do that here because we don't know. But you have people here who don't care about you. And I'm not trying to say I care about you more than anybody else because I really don't want to meet none of y'all. I'm just going to be real. I'm just going to tell you the truth. <laughs> I don't want to meet y'all. I love you on the podcast. I said what I said, I'll leave. But there are people who want to promise you something and they're not going to deliver it to you and you're going to be scammed. Unfortunately, you're going to see that a lot in the repack communities. And I'm going to tell you where you're going to see it from. You're going to see it from YouTubers, unfortunately. 
a lot of YouTubers, diaspora local, will make channels on the behalf of the B1 and the pro-black and sell consultations, yeah. and they're going to take your money. And they're selling mm -hmm. land scams. That's really big, too. I can get you a pile of land. You send this Negro your money, Leroy Jackson mm -hmm. or whoever else, that Negro is going somewhere back to Memphis with your money. <laughs> And so we gotta be we gotta be understanding that these things happen. Now, we have to do a good job of building that infrastructure of people who can help us who are legit. We just had the young lady here just yeah. now. What's her name? Uh, Sharon. 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 Yes. People who've been in the industry like that for, for, for years that has credibility. But we don't look for credibility. We look for who can talk the best, who got the biggest microphone, and then we then we get mad. We got to give our opportunities to people who actually can swing the bat. That's the thing I'm saying. But I will tell you, please do not send your money to anybody starting a new cryptocurrency who has never done it. Don't send your money for land scams. If you want to come here and visit to do any investing, come and visit Uganda first mm -hmm. or Ghana first or Kenya first. You know, come and see if you like being here. See if you like it. There's many places you can invest in the world and get your money, return on money, but never send your money to an idiot. And then the person will be out there with your money flaunting on Instagram, taking pictures. That's another thing too. They always take pictures. Yep. <laughs> and shamelessly as well, because it's like... They always... One person we know, he always takes pictures. <laughs> he always names drops. But he's broke. Always. Like outcast is always like hallways. That's what he does. People are taking pictures on Instagram next to things with people trying to make themselves look important. That's what liars do. Mm -hmm. I, on Instagram, I don't have time to, to, to post a picture. I'm working. I ain't got. Yeah, we've seen your Instagram. No offense. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't care about impressing you for what I don't. I don't really like y'all that much, to be honest. I'm just going to be... I love the way he just keeps... Insult, like, Yeah, I don't do like y'all that much. I'm just going to be real. Like, I, I do love you, but I don't like you that much. I don't I don't want nothing from you outside of me being who I am. I'm not going to lie to you to get your money. I don't need your money. But people who don't need your money, they're going to be that frank with you like that. True. So I want you to keep your money. I want you to be successful. Stop letting people lie to you and ask questions. Like, don't get so emotional mm -hmm. that you forget... That it don't make sense. Always yeah. remember it makes sense. So that's all I got to say. Um, it's perfect. I think that's a perfect way to end the episode. Unless Tina has something to oh, say. Oh no, that was a perfect way. Yeah. Perfect closing. Perfect closing. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Shit, thank you for that. Well, you know, I got to deliver, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> um, guys, be very careful um, of scammers and anyone. Do not just believe everything you see on the internet. Mm -hmm. Oh, one thing. We're doing our best to bring the best financial people that we know that can guide our um, process. By the way, Mark Meets Africa is coming to Kinganda. So out of a Amazing. popular demand. So um, we, we we would love to work with like someone like Dr. Harnett and Rhonda. So mm -hmm. I don't know how to get a hold of her, but I will. So people like that, we could, we could, we could do it. Especially if y'all keep sharing the videos so we can get some more money up in here. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind doing that if we can get the right people to help us here. But lying to mama, but I'm going to start a city. We're going to start a whole, like, th those are lies. Right? Yeah, people are not going to start no city. Nobody is building a community in Africa. I've never seen it work. Mm -hmm. They're going to build a whole community from the ground zero. You've never done it before. It's your first time doing it. Good luck. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Um, Tina, where can they find you? Um, you can find me at Tina Graham. At Tina Graham. It's so nice. Well, she doesn't want to be found, no. but <laughs> if you have anything you'd like to share with us, um, you can email us at teamkenganda at gmail.com and follow us on all our social media pages at Kenganda Nation. Also follow me at Johnny Tamaya and subscribe to the Pan-African Dating Show. See you guys next time.